Good morning, everyone. Today is April the 11th, 2024, and the time is 8.38 a.m., and today is Thursday. Uh, I just want to share a few things with you this morning. Um, things that we need to know and things that we need to do. So things that we need to know is knowing how to target um, the target the situation you're in so I'm in a situation where I'm fighting for my daughter's rights I'm fighting for her to have the best education and learning skills that she can get through her school and I am fighting for it to be applied to her so it's not about just sending your kids to school dropping them off and saying have a good day it's about making sure they have a good day by making sure they have all the tools that they need to have that good day. So there's a difference between have a good day and making sure they have a good day. So my my way of thinking of having a good day is making sure that she has everything that she needs. That she has the correct um, the teacher, the correct speech therapist, the correct um, uh, learning skills that they give her. You have to be involved in this school. These schools don't want you to be involved because they know that if you get involved, they will have to get to work. But, like, you're not getting involved in the school, so they feel like, hey, I don't have to get to work as hard as I should have because nobody's here to see my wrongdoing. So what I've been doing um, just recently before we went on spring break of this year, um... I think they went on spring break on sometime in March. Miranda was out of school all that March because of her burn on her hand. Her hand, she got burned on her hand on March the 5th. And I kept her out of school until she could. We were going back and forth to the doctor's office and we were going um, to the burn center. And I think it was like two times out of the week. So I was back and forth, you know, with Miranda's burn hand. But anyways, when I, before we went on spring break, it was a Friday, and she didn't have to return back to school until April the 2nd, 2024. So before we went on our spring break, this is what happened. I had a meeting. Prior to the meeting, I had talked to the vice, the, the principal. The principal of the school, I talked to his supervisor. We had a really strong, strong meeting. And nobody wanted to start the meeting. The boss of the principal has said, "How, well, how, who's going to start the meeting? So everybody looked at each other like, well, I'm, I don't know what to say. Well, I don't know how to start this. Well, I don't want to start this. So I said, fine, I'll start this. So I introduced it myself. I introduced it who I was and who I was uh, standing up for. And I told them all my issues I was going through at the school, how they, they were disrespecting me, and how Miranda was not getting the services that she needed in school. And I was just telling them everything. So the few things that I talked to the school about, the, the, the principal's boss, I told them that I was being disrespected from the OEM office manager and the GLA, the guidance learning um, lady here at the school. And she, they were disrespecting me a lot and they were harassing me because I didn't have the conservatorship for Miranda. But it is in process. And uh, I have to wait two weeks for it before I get a court date. So, I mean, when Miranda had her doctor's appointment, they were telling me, well, we cannot give you the papers that you need because all I wanted was a copy of the IEP papers that we had a meeting on. And I wanted to give it to the doctor because I had to have the conservatorship medical form filled out by the doctor, return it back to him so we could get a court date going. So they, when I called the school, the OM answered the phone, the office manager, and she said, Hello? And I said, Yes, I'm Miranda Scott's mom, and I'm calling because I need a copy of the IEP paper. So I can be able to give it to the doctor so they can be able to get to know Miranda better. So that way they can put up their license and they can be able to sign the conservatorship medical form. So that, when I told her that, 
she said, well, I'm sorry, but you don't have conservatorship over Miranda, and we cannot give it to you. So you know how that probably made me feel very disappointed. Because they already know me at the school without her mom. I pick her up and drop her off every day. So, and I had a lot of, you know, talks with them. So I said, uh, they said, is Miranda there with you? I said, look, I need this paper because I need to turn them into the doctor. And I, and they said, well, um, we can have it to you what, maybe in a couple of days. And I said, well, I need this paper now because they want to get to know Miranda better. Miranda's not speaking to them. They have in their in their um, rules that they follow that, you know, Miranda has to be the one that says yes. And they have the rules that they follow that um, they have to speak to Miranda and because she's already an adult. She's 19 years old. Well, at the time she was 19, she just had a birthday. And I said, well, good luck. Go ahead and try to talk to her. But they didn't get nothing out of her. So they said, well, we cannot give up our license if she's not talking. And I said, well, maybe I made a suggestion. I said, maybe I can get you the IEP papers and I can bring it to you to get you to know her better, which I assume they should already have known her because she's in the file at the school. I mean, at the doctor's office. And so I, I called the school and I told the OAM, I said, the office manager, and I said, uh, can I get a copy of the paper? I said, because I needed to give it to the doctor so we could get the medical, uh, conservatorship medical form filled out and return it back to the paralegal guys attending me. And she said, well, unless Miranda is, uh, says yes, then I'll give it to you. But if she says no, I can't. And I'm like, Miranda, say yes, say yes, say yes, you know. So, you know, she says, Miranda with you. And I said, yes, she's right here. And... They said, Miranda, is it okay we give your mom the IEP papers? And Miranda just said yes. She goes, okay, you can come and pick them up. But to me, they were going to make me wait a couple of days, at least about four days, three to four days. So, I mean, the school is really playing as parents. You know, we need to stand up and we need to fight back. So what I did is um, I said, well, they're harassing me, give me a bad time. Uh, on January the 10th, 2024, the beginning of the year, I also had the IEP meeting with them. And I requested from the ALG, I guess, uh, the learning is the learning guidance. I requested from her, I said, I need a copy of the papers that we had a meeting. And there she's like, well, um, and Miranda was standing next to me in the office. And she said, Miranda, is it okay we give these papers to your mom? I'm like, of course, I'm her mom. And Miranda just put her head down and she said, yes. You know, so I feel that was like kind of like harassing and intimidating her more. So I said, oh, my God, these people, man, they're giving me a bad time. So I said, okay. So I got the papers and I left. And... um I said, you know what, this is too much. This is way too much because prior to that, they already did a lot of stuff to me too by putting a bruise on her, calling the adult protective services on me to have me arrested and have her removed from the home. They did a lot already, you know. And then giving her, you know, foods that she's not supposed to be eating, not following doctor's orders, not giving her speech therapists, um, well, not giving her extended time with the speech therapist, not, um, not giving her her diet food, and um, not giving her a one-on-one -on -one teacher. And then the principal at the school tells me, well, we cannot apply these things to her unless she has, um, uh, oh, unless you have them up to date. They have to be up to date once a year. I'm like, oh my God, why didn't people tell me why I have to start a fight with them so that way they can tell me what I need to do? So I said, fine. I went to the doctor's office. I told them that I need the medical papers. And I told them that, um, you know, if they can update the papers. And they were looking and looking in the, in the computer and their files. They didn't find nothing, 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 nothing. And then... I said, well, so I came back to the school and I said, well, you guys should have this paper on file. If you 
if you don't if you have it on file give it to me and i'll go have it update they said we're sorry we don't have nothing on file for miranda i said well how am i going to get these things you know so he was making me think if i get them up to date then yes she'll be able to get the services so i went home and i said i know i have to have them at home because i don't really throw my papers away i said i know it has to be here and i have to have them at home i know i have to have them so i went home and i went to find them and if I did find them, I had to make another doctor's appointment, go back to the doctor's office and show them the paper and tell them that I want it up to date. So they updated the paperwork and I came back to the school. I gave it to them and now they throw me with um, uh, our school is small and we we don't have we can't provide the services for Miranda because Miranda is a bright student. She's she doesn't she's she doesn't um she doesn't really need these services. This is for kids that really have um a very uh, strong disability and they can't function, you know, so this is only for them. I said, Well it's been requested from the doctor. My daughter's been mentally severe disturbed. She's been bullied by a teacher. She's only sleeping thirty minutes a night. She's and she's um She's borderline diabetic, and she's uh, she has sleep apnea, pul pulmonary disease, and you know the doctor ordered this because we know he knows her condition and what he's requesting. So they said, well, we cannot do this because we see that Miranda's a bright student. She's fast on learning. She's picking up things very well. She's higher than other kids. So they like to compare us because. The doctor knows that Miranda really needs this one-on-one -on -one ex uh, teacher, extended time with the psychologist, and a one-on-one -on -one teacher. I mean, uh, the diet food. So, so extended time with the psychologist, a one-on-one -on -one teacher, and a diet food. They know that Miranda needs this. I even took them papers. They have all the paperwork that they need, but they don't take into consideration because they're trying to save this money. They want the money. They don't care about your child they really don't they don't care if your child picks it up or don't pick it up or learn something or don't learn something that's their problem what they're concerned about is that their work is being applied to you regardless if you understand it or you don't understand it as long as their job is done they're okay so they don't care if your child learns or don't learn picks it up or don't pick it up all they're worried about is that their job is done. So I said, I got to make sure my job is done as a parent too. So I said, I came to the office and I said, you know what? I'm tired of these people nonsense. So I said, I want, I called the school one day and I said, I want to talk to the um, OM's manager, office manager, manager, supervisor. Oh, excuse me. And they said, well, it's the principal. I said, I'm not going to get nowhere because they're all together. And then I said, well, I wanted to speak to the a AGL um, uh, supervisor. And they said, well, the that's uh, the principal. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm in a jam here. <laughs> so I said, uh, hmm. Well, I called back a couple of days later just thinking about it and praying and meditating. How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? So I said, something came to my mind. And I said, well, I'm going to... I called school. Oh, excuse me. I called school and I said, I want to speak to the vice principal. I want to speak to the supervisor of the principal of the school. So... They said, oh, well, I just already started here, and I don't have too much experience on who is who. He said, but I'll find out for you. I said, would you please? I really will appreciate it. And they found out. I called back in the evening. They told me that uh, they gave me the phone number and the name of the, prince, of the supervisor of the principal. And I was able to talk to him, and I had a meeting. Uh, he's the one that set up the meeting for us. So we had a meeting before spring break, and it was very strong. And I did tell them how they were disrespecting me. He said they're pretty, they're right on the conservatorship, but 
they should have been guiding me and helping me and, and telling me options like what I can do, what I can't do, where to go, you know, how to go about the things. So they gave me a bad time. That's all they did. So the the supervisor's principal brought everybody into the office. And when I reported this to him, he gave me the best attention that anybody could ever give me. He heard me. He didn't interrupt me. He didn't tell me I was wrong. They were right. He just said yes to everything. And he was writing everything down. Um, and he set up the meeting. And we all came to the meeting. And I brought I brought everything up. How they were treating me. What they were saying. Uh, how they hurt my daughter with the bruise. And didn't report it to me. Everything. You know. So I guess he must have had a strong meeting with them because when we came back from spring break, yeah, Miranda went to school the first day, like on the 2nd, April the 2nd, 2024. By April the 3rd, 2024, the next day, Miranda was telling me that she didn't want to go out. She was like, she was like, Mom, no out today. Uh, sleepy Lake, Sleepy Lake. So I had to get off the car and go talk to somebody there. <sighs> Oh, sorry. I'm not sleepy. I'm just yawning because that's how the spirits function. They don't want you to be telling the truth or helping people. And uh, I got off the car, and I was waiting for the principal, and I said, uh, he came up to me, and he goes, guess what, guess what? I'm like, what? He was like, Miranda's finally going to have a physical speech therapist working with her next week. Not this week, but next week. They'll be working with her. I'm like, wow, you know, all this hassle we have to go through just so you guys can give her what she needs. You see, if we don't stand up and protect our kids, then our kids are going to destroy themselves because nobody's standing up or advocating for them. So, I mean, I'm glad that I did this because it shows me that there is money in the school. It shows me that people can pay attention to your children. It also shows me that I have work to do. I have to enforce it. I have to stand up for her. I have to advocate for her. I have to make sure that she gets the best, uh, the best learning skills that she can receive. And I told the principal, I said, "Look, I want this in writing." And yesterday, on the tenth, April the tenth, twenty twenty-four, he finally gave me a letter after I was waiting for it. Now I waited for this letter since the third or the fourth and now we're already on the on the 11th april 11 24. he gave me this letter on the 10th but let me show you how poor they are they don't care about your kids they don't care about your kids and like i was requesting the letter i always tell him sign it date it logo time and make a copy he was supposed to write to me he was supposed to write to me Things that I should know. And things that you should know. He was supposed to write on the paper. Official date of approval. When did they approve the speech therapist? The name and phone number of the speech therapist to have communication. The beginning starting date. And he was supposed to give me a meeting with the speech therapist before we get started. So I can address the issues that Miranda's having. That way, she knows exactly what to target her in. And I also, re I put a request to meet with speech therapists before starting speech with Miranda. Did they comply to this? No, they didn't. I want you to see his letter. This is his letter right here. He gave it to me yesterday. And it says the date, 4-10-2024, Miranda Speech Service. He put, uh, Miranda began her in-person speech service today. So he's trying to tell me that she started Wednesday, April the 9th, 20, April the 9th, 2024, Wednesday. And then he signed it. So I don't see if this is good enough. Okay, I think this was just something fast to hurry up and get her in and get her on and get her off my back. But I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to go tell them, 
I want the official date of approval. I want the name and phone number of the speech therapist is going to be uh, dealing with Miranda. The beginning date that she started. And I also want a meeting with the person. And I also want them to sign date, logo, and time and copy. And give me a copy. And keep a copy. And I think this is very poor of him as a principal. This is a principal from a school. Very highly educated. But it shows his education. And his interest is not in these children. It's in his pocket. Okay. So us as parents, we have to target that. Another thing I did, uh, some schools are supposed to be working with you. So I told her new teacher, because I changed her teachers. I wanted Miranda to say these words every single day. I wanted her to say the, the months of the year and, and the week, the week, the week, the days of the week. So he gave me... It was, I wanted it dark and kind of like medium size because I have a board that I want them to organize them. You know, there's like a long thing I have. It has little compartments like slots like here and you can just slide them in there. So this is what he gave me. And I mean, it's okay for me to read off of it for her, but I really wanted her, I wanted it to be darker and like thicker. And this is what he gave me. He gave me January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, October, November, December. And then he gave me the month, the, the, the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But he didn't give me Saturday and Sunday. Do we live Saturday and Sunday? Yes, we do. So he didn't give me. So that's another thing I have to go and fix. So, you know, they're doing this in a hurry, fast. They hurry up and get you off their back. They want to be supportive of you, but they're not. They're not. So, I got to go back and correct this. And you always want to keep a copy of everything you do. In the name of Jesus, you want to keep copies of everything you do and make sure that you have your copies. Make sure you're doing things right. Make sure you take advantage of the services that's there for you. Uh, all the men told me verbally that the speech service was going to talk to me. But I told him I wanted it in writing. Why in writing? Because that shows me that I'm doing my job as a parent. Okay? They can easily say, well, I told her. But it's not about you telling me. It's about you writing it down on paper. So that way you have proof. Okay. So that is my uh, things I'm going through today. And I also made a copy for me. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So keep on reporting. Keep on having meetings. And keep on going from supervisor to supervisor to supervisor until somebody hears you. Miranda's already getting her speech therapist. She started yesterday. That's what they tell me. But I need to have this on writing. And I need to make sure that it's done right. Because this is very sloppy of this man. Yeah. So you guys take care of yourself. Be wise men and wise women. And fight for your children. Build them the best way you can. Because they are our new generation. Okay. We need to take care of them. Okay. So that's all I have for now. And I'll see you in my next video.